Jesus, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. We give you glory and majesty, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, O oh God. We thank you for this theme this morning, God. We honor you, Lord, in this house. Let your spirit move in this place. Let your anointing flow like rivers of living waters, Jesus. Let your spirit move, God. Let your spirit move, God. Let your spirit move. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Yeah, you can clap your hands. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are the King of kings. Everybody, look at somebody close to you. Tell them God bless you. I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. We'd like to welcome everyone here to Redeemer Apostolic Church, where we know the Spirit of God is here, and we've come to magnify and glorify the King of Glory. How many came to worship here this morning? Can you lift up your hands? Father, we worship you. We honor you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for this opportunity, God, that you be exalted in this place. Take the minute of
to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who can stand against the Lord? Jesus. 
Oh, that's kind of weak. The Bible says, let everything, everyone that has bread, praise Him. Why don't you uh, take the time to greet your brother. Say something nice to them. Just, just say, you look good today. You look good today. You're, you're aging. T tell them, say something like this. You're aging, but you're not aging like milk. I need you to turn them just a little bit more. Turn a little bit more. Tell them, um, you're aging, but you look, you're not aging like milk. You're, you're aging like fine wine, baby. Somebody says, Pastor, you're getting older. I says, this gets, that's, that's it. I'm getting older. God is good. Good to be in God's presence. Amen. You know, if you're not going to enjoy, you know, when you come to church, you're not supposed to enjoy yourself. You're supposed to enjoy the Lord. Amen. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. You may be seated for just a bit. Uh, I am the bishop. We have visitors here. I don't have to announce myself, but I am uh, the bishop of the house. Uh, thank God for uh, the first lady. Amen. Uh, how many appreciate the first lady? Praise God. Uh, she is, uh, I need my intercessors to start praying for her. She's been invited to speak in uh, Los Angeles at a conference. Yeah. Amen. S somebody said, well, they didn't invite you. I said, I'm, I'm chilling. Like the young people said, I'm chilling. I'm good. Uh, they told me that uh, they have some Harley David. Y'all need to pray for me because they want to take me on a Harley Davidson cruise down the boulevard now. Now, can I give me some fake tattoos? You know, something like what Milo said. Or, you know, uh, something like, Oye, como va, suavecito. Oh, yeah, you know, praise the Lord. I wouldn't do that. God is a good God. finicky I am when I get up here with the sounds y'all messing with me I want to take the time to thank God for church uh, for Camp Unstoppable I, 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 there's so many people to thank uh, my, my son the director, my sister Becky uh, give them a round of applause a lot of work you know, it's a lot of work. We used to run camps, and my God, you 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 take it takes time to recover. Our, this is our biggest. Also, I want to thank God for our staff. They were amazing, all of them, every one of them. Too many people to to mention. Praise the Lord, and most importantly, all the children, the kids. They were just bomb. They were good. And some, you know, someone said, oh, man, are all these 150 kids or something like that, are these part of Redeemer? I said, well, yes, uh, but, you know, they get kind of lost in the shuffle, praise the Lord, with the families and stuff like this. We want to encourage you, uh, family, uh, all the parents, that um, the camp is not over, meaning uh, you need to continue to build on their lives. You know, I took the time. Can I take my time for a little bit here? Uh, one of the and uh, one of the times, uh, Pastor Spencer, which we did a phenomenal job. Amen. Uh, he had the children write on a piece of paper without putting their names on them um, uh, as to what their prayer request was, and I and I took them because I wanted to. The Lord instructed me because I wanted to pray over their requests, even though there was closure that night. And I was curious and I wanted to see 98% of their prayer request was, please pray for my family. It wasn't like addiction. It wasn't like hardcore issues, these things. It's just, please pray for mom and dad, my family. Which indicates to us that they're, you know, they have, as kids, that they have concerns about their home. You know, the home should be Amen. And we heard such a phenomenal uh, message this morning, and, um, and he's going to, I'm sure, elaborate on the subject of what, you know, what, what God gave him. But I want to say, I want to encourage the parents to to do diligence. The church is an extension to your to your to your ministry. You don't you, you do not push your responsibility on the church and things like this. We're here to help you. 
we're here to support you. And also, all the parents, you know, we, we I wanted to say this, also we do a lot of uh, uh, sponsorship, and you have a year now to prepare, uh, to save up, uh, praise the Lord, amen, and so that you can be ready for next year to get your kids to, to go to camp. Somebody say amen to that. So I, I can't say enough, it was just a phenomenal experience, uh, um, Camp Unstoppable. I'm going to speak to our team where uh, we don't have to wait till next year to have another camp, but I think we can have some other services that are uh, associated with just the youth. Amen? I have Brother Spencer come back. The way he uh, operated in the gifts, it was so powerful. And somebody say thank you, Jesus, for our kids. July uh, 13th uh, through the 15th, beginning at 6.30 p.m., Parents, register uh, your child today at the VBS table located in the, in the foyer. Um, and this is for uh, Vacation Bible School for our kids. Once again, everything transitions. Our team, uh, they go to work. We need our silent partners to partner up. Come on, somebody. What I mean by that is that... Uh, uh, when you see a need, we need you to rise up and uh, cooperate with the program. Once again, the emphasis is reaching the community. We need to reach our children. And so we do this by the way of uh, uh, putting this program together that takes all week. And also there's always resources. Somebody, how many understand this? I shouldn't even ask you that nothing is free, especially today. Especially today. It takes resources. And so... Um, Thank God that we have the ability to give for this cause, towards this cause, and any cause that promotes and pushes the, the kingdom of God. Keep this in mind that when you invest in anyone or in a child, you're changing the destiny in someone's life. You know, we had uh, we have several people that have come to us. You know, we've been in ministry since, you know, for many years now. And uh, you, you know, my wife and I, through our ministry, uh, we've touched so many people's lives, right? And they come around your life. They'll come around and they'd have, you know, Bishop, do you remember me? No, I don't remember you. But you touched my life. You know, that means so much to us. Amen. The reward is in their gratitude. The reward is seeing how God has uh, flourished and how God has developed them and they're serving the Lord. And so I just want to think of you, think of it this way, that when you give back or give invest into someone's life, you, you're doing just that. You're, you're, you have part uh, in their lives in terms of God's purpose in their lives or destiny. Amen. And uh, uh, you might not get the thank you then, but in time, praise the Lord. Your Bible says your reward is great in heaven. Nothing, 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 amen, goes away. So I want to just make sure that you um, join up with us. And so we also have a back-to-school drive. Uh, you can donate at any time by placing your donations in the envelope and giving to an usher during the, the tithes and offerings. Also, you can go online. Those of you, our audience, those of you that are watching all over from, you know, we have members that are um, basic, they're, they're members of this ministry. They contribute to this ministry because they consider themselves uh, members. We want you to go online and contribute. Somebody say contribute. I don't, so also, uh, I, before we pick up our tithes and our offering, um, I want you to also pray for, my, uh, pray for me as well. After the Spanish service, our third service this Sunday, we are um, scheduled to go speak at Pastor Barca's uh, ministry. It's a Spanish ministry. My Espanol is not the greatest. Thank you for not saying amen. And they asked me, I said, do you need a translator? I said, only when I speak in tongues, praise the Lord, but I'll get by in Jesus' name. And so uh, pray for his ministry. You don't know his kids. You know, he sent his children to our camp. Uh, and so we want to be able to be a support to them in Jesus' name. Well, the church has every reason to rejoice. Yeah. You know, you already know why. You already know. Psalms 139, um, the reason is, he says, for you, for you created my inmost beings and you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully 
and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And this week has been one of the greatest victory for Roe and Wade being overturned. Somebody say amen. Thank God. And amen. Thank God in Jesus' name for that. So we have so much to be rejoiced. Hallelujah. We, God, the Lord will vindicate us. You know, the Lord spoke to me some time ago. I said, Lord, vindicate us. Through my first prayers when the whole COVID and all the various different persecutions and just onslaughts that were coming against God's people, against humanity. I said, Lord, I said, vindicate us. And he says, I will watch. But he told me, I will vindicate myself first. And, and, it, and, and I said, what do you mean? He said, I will vindicate my name. I will honor my name. Does that make sense? So it's better to be on God's side. Yeah, aren't you glad that you have a mighty God? I, I, want, I want to release a blessing to you. Uh, um, every time, you know, when I want to, I believe in the power of uh, just do, you know, prophetic declarations in Jesus' name. I want to give you a scripture. Psalms 118 says, the shouts of joy. Our church is loud not because, uh, well, we're just loud. Some of you people are sent by some loud people. He said, the shouts of joy shall not depart from the tents of the righteous. If the righteousness, amen, somebody say, I will not, I'm, I'm not going to lose my shout. Hallelujah is the highest praise. God is a good God. Would you please stand? I want to do this. I want to pray a prayer over you because I want to, I want you to be, um, it, I want you to be a blessing to the house that feeds you. Um, we have various ways that we can give. This, um, we have many ways for you to contribute uh, through Secure Give, the Vision app, the kiosk at the bookstore, in person, by mail, or you can text to give by simply uh, typing the dollar amount to 84321. Somebody say amen. Now, I want to pray for you because Isaiah 45, 3 says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. That means that if something's in darkness, hear me now, it needs to be revealed. The Bible says at the entrance of the word, this word, cometh light. Who is that light? Jesus is a marvelous light. And now he begins to reveal that which has been hid. And through our giving, this is not, amen, through your obedience, stay where you're at, stay where you're at. Into your, into your obedience, praise the Lord, you begin to discover uh, to the word of the Lord that God begins to reveal and unlock the true riches. Some may say the true riches. And hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which shall call thee by name and the God of Israel. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. I believe in the God that knows how to prophetically expedite things. This is a prophetic house. The Bible says that he, he, he led Israel through prophets. The need for prophets to rise up in the time that we live today. Come on, somebody. I'm not preaching to you because we are dealing with high levels of spiritual wickedness. And, and, and here it is now. The Bible says about Janices and the Jambreses. Who are the Janices and the Jambreses? When Moses came to, to Pharaoh, the kingdom of the time, amen. Moses, or rather Pharaoh called the wizards, the witches. For the Bible says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the night. So what is the church to do? We must take the staff of God, the rod of God, the word of God, and represent God. The New Testament refer references the Janices and the Jambreses. These are the people, these are the wizards and the witches that withstood Amen, Moses. There is a force that is trying to stop the church. But I hear a sound. Can I talk to you a little bit? Everything that God is an intrinsic God. He's a thinking God. He's a strategic God. So when God speaks, we respond. We respond in prayer. We respond in the word. We respond in praise. Papa, chalet
Shataravosha. I gotta do this. I have to do this. Amen. For the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principles and powers. So when I tithe, listen to me, when I give to God, I'm taking the seed. What is the seed? The seed is from my harvest. And I'm declaring through my seed, through my giving, that that which is cursed, anything that is, see, the Bible says the seed must be planted. It must die first. So why? The seed dies and then it brings forth the new. So I must not take that, the seed. I must bury it. So when I give, I'm burying something in my life uh, that needs to produce. Listen to me. When you give, those things that are stagnant in your life, those things that are not moving in your life, by you giving. See, you understand? The Bible says that he promises that the windows of heaven will open up. I declare, watch it, raise your hands. I declare by the power of God that my tithing and my giving and my contribution, you just gave me a silver coin, Brian. You gave me a silver coin. Amen. There you go. Praise the Lord. That's, a, that's God's currency. When he gave, I, I got, I, I'm going to get out of the way. When he gave, uh, I didn't just take that. He says, I'm giving this to this house. And then I said, what is it that you need? He says, I need my pain to go. See, the treasures. Hare Pasha. Look, he's moving his leg. He's moving his leg. John, oh, you ought to shout with God. You ought to shout up. Why? Why is giving? Why is giving so important? Because, uh, come on, raise your hand. By the I don't want, I got to get out of the way. Jesus. And so what I want to do, I want to declare the scripture that those things that are hidden, locked up in darkness, they're meant for you to have. Rather it be healing, rather it be deliverance, uh, rather it be marriage, uh, rather it's campaigning or whatever it is. Uh, God needs those doors to open. Oh, you ought to hear what I'm talking about here. God, I declare by the, right, raise your hands. I declare by the power of God that by my seed, my contrib contributing to your kingdom, I am declaring this, that I am a believer. That I am a believer. You've been good to me. And those things that have been locked up, delayed, I declare them by the power of God that the riches, the treasures that are laid up for me and my children to be released now. In Jesus' name, all the people shout and say amen. These ushers are going to come your way. Please don't ignore. Uh, this is not a... Uh, uh, I, I operate in this level, praise the Lord. So please obey the Holy Spirit. There are ways that you give. Amen. Again, to Secure Give, the Vision app. The ladies back there are waiting for you. The bookstore in person by mail. Or you can text to give. Please give. God bless you. Go. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise right there. Amen. Without any further delay, let's receive Pastor Jerome Davidson in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Amen. Well, Father, we just praise your name. We glorify you. We thank you for such a time as this. You brought us here to this place at such a time as this, Father, to bless us, to bring us before your presence, to place in us the fire of your spirit. I pray, God, that everybody under the sound of my voice would be blessed, touched from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Let your spirit move in them. Take out the sting of sin. Let their hearts be full of your glory and your power. To you be all glory, to you be all praise and honor. Bless this house. Bless our bishop. Bless all the leaders. Let the church go forth in your glory. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. Give God some praise. Come on. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on. Bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord. Well, we got a little bit of work to do. You may be seated. God bless you. We have quite a bit of work to do in the Word. And uh, by the time we leave this place, I hope uh, to ignite in you a fire of fight. The fire of fight. And uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. To all of you who are here, first-time visitors and guests, we want to thank God for you coming. Thank God for visiting. This is a wonderful church. If you're looking for a church home and those of you that want to grow in the things of God, this church is a wonderful church to do that under our leader, Bishop Neverette. Come on, Bishop. Let's give it up for Bishop. Well, <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about the word of the Lord. I do have a couple of friends here. Uh, I have my team here. They're supporting me. I'm, I'm running for Congress, and uh, I have a few friends here. All right. I think that... And uh, Kathy, Kathy Pierce, she's running for uh, State House, and she's right here on the second row. Stand up, Kathy, let them see you. Yeah. Kathy uh, comes from a large family here. The Pierces, they're like the, the Cartwrights. They're like the Cartwrights. That's for older people. Those of you that used to watch Bonanza, you know. Yeah, the, the Pierces is like the Cartwrights of Mesa. And uh, so she's a great woman of God. Please support her. Also support my good friend, K Chris Hamlet. Stand up, Chris. Let him see you. He's running for school superintendent. Yeah. Chris is a fighter, a former army. Uh, he jumped out of planes and all that kind of tough stuff. And he wants to be there to protect our children from these demons. Amen. So please support that brother. Never thought I'd see a time as this where they look at they didn't do this stuff when my mama was raising me. <laughs> they would have had hell to pay. My mom don't play that stuff. My mom came out to my games. You know, I was playing football and playing sports. She would go out to the field right during the game. And she'd tell the coach, she said, Coach, my son needs a break. I don't want to see him on the field no more tonight. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> that's what I want. I want to be here. Like, my mom would just take over stuff, man. She would embarrass me, man. You know, but uh, she, she's just a great woman. And that's what we need. We need tough mothers like that. We need tough fathers like that. You don't let your kids tell you what they're going to eat and what they're not going to eat. You need to stop that stuff. You act like your kids run you. Don't you pay the bills? Well, they said they're not going to eat that, and we got to get up and we got to go. No, we're not. They're going to eat that squash and rice, and that's going to be it for the night. <laughs> y'all got to stop spoiling these kids y'all give them everything got a cell phone they can barely talk and y'all got them an a, a iPhone you need to cut the stuff out learn, let, let, them, let them learn to earn let them learn to earn there's nothing each, each, each level should go up you don't give them everything right out the gate you spoil the child you spare the rod you spoil the child and, uh, but today we want to talk, and we're going to get into this word today, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Amen? 
feel like having some fun. Now, now let's look into the Bible. Let's look at 2 Samuel, and Bishop told me to finish the mulberry tree. We'll see if we get to it. <laughs> well, those of you who probably know that I played football for the Oakland Raiders, I played uh, running back for Arizona State, and uh, football was one of my things. It was one of my things. But everywhere I went in playing football, I gave God the praise. I gave God the glory. I didn't let, because everybody thinks that the football players out there living that life and, and all the women and all that kind of stuff, I never did it. I stand before the Lord, I never did it. Not one party, not one drink of alcohol, not one thing outside of my marriage, nothing. Nothing. And because I took that stand like that, a lot of players gave their life to the Lord. I had a player, one player was so much on fire, he started a church in Dublin, California and grew it to 3,000 members. See, a lot of people just don't have the boldness to speak up for God. I don't care what atmosphere I'm in, if it's right, I speak right. If it's wrong, I speak it wrong, I speak against it. I'm sorry, but just, you're gonna have to just grow up. Because we cannot allow evil to persist around us and then flourish and grow in the name of love. Now, love is supposed to be a two-sided thing, right? If we show them love, and then they're supposed to show us love. But let me tell you something. Loving your neighbor is very simple. Do you want to know how to love your neighbor? Can I have a, can I have a, yeah, just somebody say. Let me tell you how to love your neighbor. Let me tell you how to, love is not giving away your car and your keys and giving up all your rights and letting other people push you around and tell you a dog is a cat and a cat is a bat and all that kind of stuff. No, we're not accepting that anymore. Jesus gave us the golden rule. This is how you love your neighbor. Very simple. The Ten Commandments. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't covet nobody's wife. Don't lie on them. And that's how you live in harmony with your neighbor. That's how you love your neighbor. I don't owe you nothing else. And you got to go out just like I do, bust your butt, go to work, go to school, learn how to get a living, learn how to go about your life, but I'm not supposed to give you everything in the name of love and let you tell me that a dog is a cat and I'm supposed to accept that. No. All right. I'm just, I'm just talking. Now let's get into the book. And uh, of, of uh, Second Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter five. Let's look at uh, verse twenty-three and twenty-four. All right. Second Samuel, chapter five, start at verse twenty-three. And David inquired of the Lord, and he said, "Thou shalt not go up." But fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the, multi, the mulberry trees. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. I want to talk to you about fighting with God fighting with God. So long, for so long in the church, I had preachers and stuff tell me that playing football and playing them sports is going to send you to hell. You ain't supposed to do all them sports. I said, well, what, where is that in the Bible? Well, they said, it said marble not. Now, many of y'all probably don't know what marbles is, but it's these little glass balls that you're supposed to make a circle and knock the ball out of the circle, and every ball you knock out of the circle is yours. But marvel and marble are two different things. And Christians today, they feel like conflict and fight and having to deal with something in the battle realm is not of God. But let me tell you something. God is a very vicious and violent God. God loves violence with everything that is outside of his will. 
God fights against everything that is of darkness and he expects you, the children that he's brought into the kingdom, the children that he's taken out of darkness and made a child of light, that he took you out of sins and brought you into the kingdom, the children that he sent his son for to die and shed his blood for, he is expecting you to stand up against the evil that he brought you out of. He wants you to speak against the darkness that he brought you out of. You know what it was to be in the struggle that you was in. You know what it was to be in fear and to be in darkness and to be bound by a crack habit and a hope habit and an alcoholic habit. You know what that struggle was and God wants you with his power to go out there and tell people that there is a way out. You don't have to lie, cheat, steal, or sell your body. God is about to make a way for you. You are a child of God and when God puts his hand on your life, can't nobody curse you. When God blesses you, ain't no curse, no devil, no witch, no warlock, can't nobody put a curse on you because the God of heaven is putting a blessing on you and I tell you what he is surrounding you with his glory and with his power and with his might and can't nobody take away what God has made God wants you to be a fighter when God took Israel and made a nation out of them, he made them a nation of, of fighters. He took uh, Joshua and put a sword in his hand and said, listen, the promised land that I gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want you to go in there and fight for it. What you mean fight for it? I thought you promised it to us. He said, I did promise it to you, but there's going to be some giants in there. They're seven feet tall. They're 20 feet tall. They're 30 feet tall, but I'm with you. And when I'm with you, can't nobody stop you. I'm I'm trying to tell you, you are a bad mama jamma. Can't nobody mess with you when you got the power of God in your life. The children of God today act like they ain't got a daddy. We act like we are the fatherless. We act like we're the homeless. We act like we're the paupers and the beggars. But let me tell you what David said. I once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread, because our God is a great provider. You understand me? You might be at your lowest, but God is about to step in with a blessing. We serve the God who will touch a raven and and make the ravens send you bread and flesh and water. God will take a demon and make them come and feed you. God will take a devil, a crackhead, and somebody that's on alcohol, somebody that ain't never called on the name of God, and they'll bring you food and clothes and shelter. Somebody's about to bless you with a house. How many receive it right now? I know the house market is crazy, but somebody's about to open a door for you. A way is about to be made. Doors are opening for the children of God. When God is for us, he is more than a world against us. And it doesn't matter if they're angels, demons, things present, things to come, things in the earth, under the earth, above the earth. It does not matter because God is the most high God. He's the most high. Somebody just, your mouth is going to feel good when you say it. Say he's the most high. Satan knows that. Satan runs around as if he is all of that. But one thing you'll never find him do is that he has never gone in the face of God and told him that I'm greater than you. He ain't never done it and he never will do it. He'll use street suckers out here in the world to make them yell at God like they're stupid dummies. He tried to get Job to do it, but Job said, no, nah, no, nah, I put my hand over my mouth before I curse God. Satan, let me, let me tell y'all something. You, people say there's a battle between God and Satan. What do you fix your mouth and get that blasphemy? D give me a bar of soap and wash your mouth out. Don't you ever say that God is fighting against the devil. The devil is a creature of God. God ain't never had to fight against the devil, and he never will. When God wants to fight the devil, he'll just say to any angel, say, hey, come here. Go get him. The devil is nowhere on the level of God. Stop thinking like that. Stop saying that. When God wants to fight the devil, he'll just use you. And say, watch one of my righteous ones. Watch how they do. 
Satan, you want somebody to fight? Come here, Job. Job, I want you to fight the devil. And the God said to the devil, look, I'm going to give you the first punch. I want you to hit him first. Take away everything he's got. Hit his body. Take his children. Take all of his money. But I, after he, when the end comes, he's going to give me the praise. He's going to give me the glory. He will never forsake his God because he loves God deep in his heart. Is there anybody in here that loves God deep in your heart? And it doesn't matter if the clothes go, if the job goes, if the people go, if I ain't got no friends, I ain't got no family. The only thing I got is God, and God is my everything. I will never leave him. I will never abandon him. He is my everything. I ain't got nothing else. I was saying to some friends that when or if God causes the Supreme Court to reverse Roe v. Wade, that it is going to be you to you and me a sign from God that God has not forsaken America. It is going to be a sign that the hand of God is going to be with us if we be with him. If we take the sword of the word of God and see this as a window of opportunity, it's not a big door, it's not a double doorway, it's just a window, it's just a small gap. But we've got to with precision, with faith, with courage, with boldness, step into that door with the sword of the word and go out and cut the head of the snake off. Because if we let the snake stay around, it's going to recoil and python itself around a America, take away your right, take away your second amendment, take away your son and make him a daughter, take away your daughter, make him a girl and make him a boy, take away your money, take away your freedom, take away your freedom of speech, but you've got to have enough fight in you, enough faith in you to rise up and seize the moment. The time has come now for America and the child of God to get up and fight. So David inquired of the Lord. Everybody say it's prayer time. But the church has used prayer to cover up their cowardice. They use prayer to cover up the fact that they are too afraid to take action. David didn't use prayer for that reason. He didn't use prayer as a cover-up because he was a coward. He was praying to God for an action plan. When you go pray, are you praying for an action plan or you say, God, you go do it? Lord, you go in the hospitals. You go in the prisons. You go in the streets. You go into politics while I stay here, eat my whole host ice cream, play video games, watch my cell phone, watch all of the technology around me. God Almighty. David inquired. Prayer is not for you to sit down and ask God to do it all. It's a game plan from God. Jesus fell before God. He fell down in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now Gethsemane. Gath means the place of press. Simony means the garden. So he's there and he's getting pressed. It's telling him that I know your purpose is to die for the world, but I'm going to kill you before you can do it. And while he's there praying, his sweat and blood begin to mingle together. And he began to have great anxiety because he wanted to fulfill this death mission to save a wretch like you and me. And he said, Lord, if it's possible, if it's somewhere in your plans that you haven't told me about, he said, well, then let this cup pass from me. God says, uh, hold on, let me check. All right. No, it ain't in the plans. You got to die. Anybody in here ready to give it up all for God? Anybody in here say, oh, God, I don't care what it is. As long as it's in your Lamb's book of life, as long as it's in your plan, I'm willing to go through it. I don't need nobody around me. Just walk with me, Lord. Just go with me, and I will fulfill the desires of God. High five somebody. They say we got to fight. That's it. We got to fight. 
So David, David asked God, he said, Lord, he inquired of the Lord. Now, this, this happened again. Now, David inquired of the Lord, and he did it in verse 17. Hold on. Hold on one second. <laughs> and he did it in verse 17 when the Philistines heard that he was anointed. Boy, folks, jealous. Everybody say, folks, get jealous. They smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers, backstabbers. They smiling in your face. They heard that David was a And they heard that the hand of God was on this man. They heard that God was moving on him. And they begin to get, go after him before he can get, even get started. The devil knows that God has blessed America. When you and I stand and sing, God bless America, it is not a song of pride. It is a prayer request that God stay with America. Don't ever leave us. Don't ever forsake us. We need you, and I don't care how great we become. I don't care how great we are in the army. I don't care how much money we have. But without God, America is nothing. So God bless America. So he inquired of the Lord. The first time he inquired of the Lord, watch in verse 19, he inquired of the Lord. Watch how he did this. He inquired of the Lord in verse 19. He says, shall I go after these Philistines and wilt thou deliver them in my hands? And the Lord said to him, said, David, you go. <laughs> you think God is a punk? You think God is against some fighting? God ain't against no fighting. He took a man, a skinny dude by the name of Samson, and he was birthed to fight. That was his whole plan. God said, your name is Samson. You're going to be my battle axe, but this one, I ain't going to give you a sword. I'm going to put my spirit on you. The Holy Ghost is going to come up on you, and them knuckles you got is going to be able to bust up people. It's going to tear down the Philistines. Stop being a punk in the church. Stop using prayer as your runaway. God wants you to get up and fight for what's right. Fight for your sons and daughters. Fight for the Constitution. Fight for... Well, there's a thing called the separation of church and state. That's not even the law. And who's drawing these invisible lines? If I run to the church and close the door and say, devil, you can't come in here because there's a separation of church and state. Devil walk right in there and say, well, who, who's going to stop me from coming in here? And then who's going to stop God from coming in? Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the whole earth. He ain't going to stop when it gets to politics. God said, your kingdom come. And then he gets to politics and say, oop, stop right there. I can't go in there because that's politics. No, no. Jesus said, when you pray, pray thy kingdom come. What's in his kingdom? The sick are healed. What's in his kingdom? The dead live. What's in his kingdom? Awesome freedom. What's in his kingdom? Life forevermore. What's in his kingdom? Joy and no sorrow. What's in his kingdom? Freedom and no bondage. <coughs> so, he inquired of the Lord and God said, you go. I'm going to be with you. But the second time is when David inquired in verse 23, and when David inquired of the Lord, he said, he, God said to him, he said this time, he said, watch this. Thou shalt not go, but I want you to get in the back. When God is teaching you something, when you learn God and you start taking steps of obedience, just small steps, right? And you're learning to trust God. And God is learning to trust you. God doesn't know you yet. It's kind of crazy. Don't ever say that, Pastor. That's kind of crazy. Right? You say that God don't know me yet, and you say that God knows everything. God does not know you yet because God gave you a free will. And either you're going to be willing to do something for God or you're not going to be willing to do it. It's all about the condition of your heart. Are you, is your heart tender enough to move when God tells you to move? Or do you have a stony heart that will just knock the word off and you do what you want to do? So, so when Abraham, God tested Abraham, when he tested him, he wanted to see if Abraham had what it takes to take the covenant and make a new people. And God had all kinds of situations come to him 
But Abraham was so locked into the presence of God that he could not find anything to test Abraham with. So finally God says, this is crazy, but Abraham, I want you to take your son and sacrifice him. You know what Abraham did? Grab the boy and let's go. <laughs> he went up to that hill, Mount Moriah, and God had to stop his hand. And here's the words that God said. Abraham, now I know. He didn't know before. He said, but now I know that you're the man I'm about to cut a covenant with. And your seed and your seed seed is about to be as numerable as the stars. If you can count the sand, well then the sand is not even going to match the seed that you're going to have. And I'm going to make king, kings come out of them. There are going to be princes coming out of you. There's going to be blessings coming out of you. When you learn to walk with God, you will cast out devils. When you learn to walk with God, the blessings shall come over your life. When you learn to walk with God, you shall take the curse and slam it down and release a blessing so he inquired of the Lord I got to get in here he inquired of the Lord and this time God says this time David I'm not going to let you go because I want to show you how powerful I am I want to get the glory out of this prayer is not asking God to do it all but prayer is asking God for a game plan and God gave David a different game plan this time from the first time. The first time you go. This time stay back, I'm going. This time I want you to camp around the mulberry trees. Everybody say the mulberry trees. And he says, and when you, and let it be that when you hear the sound of a marching at the top of the trees, I want you to know that's the time to go do it. That's the time to get your team and go forward because at that point, I have gone before you and I'm fighting your battle. I'm with you. I'm with you. Does that mean anything to anybody? The Lord is with me. And yeah, though I'm walking through the valley in the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear because you're with me. Your rod, it used to beat me, but now it's going to beat my enemies. And your presence is giving me the nutrients that I need. Somebody shout glory to God. So he says, uh, yeah, I inquire of the Lord. I'm going to encamp, encamp around about you. But I want you to stay around the mulberry trees. Anybody ever seen one of these things? Very shady. And the reason why God wanted these trees is because it speaks to us of a spiritual energy. Three things, Pastor. The mulberry trees, you can plant them and they grow very fast. And, but they are spiritually astute enough not to give up a budding, not to bud until all of the frost, until all of, all of the coal is gone. Because the slightest frost will mess up the fruit on the mulberry tree. The mulberry tree also has leaves that are sensitive to the direction of the wind. Hello? If you have a pine tree, the pine tree is not going to move that much because it doesn't have much wind resistance. But when you have a mulberry tree that has the, the, the branches and the, the leaves the size of my hand, when the wind moves, it's sensitive. The wind represents the pneuma, the spirit of God. Pneuma is a spirit. Breath is a spirit. A demon is a spirit. An angel is a spirit. And God says, when you hear the sound of my spirit moving over the mulberry trees, that's the time to go get it done. Right now in America, the mulberry tree is moving. Right now in America, we can see that God is moving before us and he's trying to get the church to wake up saying, hey, here's the moment, here's the time, this is the time to tap your wife, this is the time to tap your husband, this is the time to tap your pastor and say, now we've got to go. Now is the time to get up and fight. This is the time for the church to arise. We've got to go fight and get it done. Our enemies will not stop. Our enemies will persist. And here is the moment where you and I have got to rise up in the political realm, in the world realm, in the kingdom realm, and fight with God. 
I don't want to hear anybody's opinion when it comes to politics because God wants us in there. God wants us making decisions that will bring his kingdom in. Don't you ever turn your back on politics. It's the time for you to make a decision for God's kingdom. It's the time for you to vote for God's kingdom. Don't let them steal our elections. Don't let them turn our boys into girls. They will never transist. A boy can never be a girl. You will never transist from a girl to a boy. It cannot happen. It's impossible. So you and I have got to go fight the thing. Uh, somebody say, I got to fight. Uh, with God's help, I've got to fight. I've got to be like the mulberry tree. <laughs> got to be like the mulberry tree because this tree had three angles to it. Number one, the fruit. The fruit had the timing of God. This tree here has what they call the calculated patience. Calculated. It knows exactly when to do it. It's not going to go too soon and it's not going to go too late. But as soon as it begins to bud, you see it one day, the fruit on it is green. The next day, it's turning red. Then the next day, it's turning black and it's ready. It's like a blackberry. Anybody know what a blackberry is? Have you noticed that when they build these homes now, they don't want any fruit trees? Have you noticed that you don't see any blackberry bushes, palm, palm trees, anything around anymore? Because they don't want you to depend on nature. They want you to depend on the grocery store. And when they take away all the grocery seed, when they take away all the seed, you have nothing left. Hey, God wants you to live on the fruit of the earth. But we have people that don't want us to have the blessings of God. Most folk don't even know what a garden is. A garden, well, where can I find that at Safeway? Can I find a garden? Where is the garden at? I mean, what is that? It sounds good. What, you got to probably get some watermelons or something there? You got to learn how to exist on the, on the earth. These folks around us don't want us to have anything, not even water. So the mulberry tree was similitude of Aaron's rod. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 17, verse 5. Numbers chapter 17, verse 5 says that Aaron's rod miraculously brought forth, budded, blossomed, and brought forth fruit. A rod. It's like a cane. It's not connected to a tree. It's not connected to anything but supernaturally, it brought forth everything it needed. You, the world can't see God with you, but you can see him in your heart. And you are going to blossom blood and bring forth fruit because you are connected to God God's going to bless you and bless you and bless you over again and bring forth fruit in your life. Can I have an amen, somebody? So let me get you ready to get out of here. This is the time to fight. This is the time that I encourage you, fathers, fight for your family. This is the time women and mothers, wives, fight for what you have. Fight for the good things around your life. Fight with God. Fight for church. Fight for school rights. It's yours. God wants you to have it. God wants you to be blessed. But he cannot bless you as long as you are accepting the curse. As long as you accept the curse, God will let you have it. But the moment comes when you want to shake it off and get out of it and walk in the blessing of God. God says, now you're talking. Now I'm with you. Uh, now I'm going to make your health spring forth as the light. Uh, I'm going to give you long life and I'm going to be in your mouth. Uh, my word shall be with you. Uh, my spirit will be with you. And can't nobody take the blessing away when God is with you. Can't nobody take the favor away when, uh, when God is with you. Can't Tink, tink, nobody. Uh, move you when God is with you. Somebody say amen. Uh, and because you are God's church, it's time to rise up uh, and let God stand up in your life and get out here and fight in these streets. Uh, get out there and vote and let God do something great in this nation. Somebody say amen. Uh, yes, if you don't do it, the devil ain't going to do it. Uh, if you don't do it, the world ain't going to do it. Uh, so God has got to raise you up, uh, bring you out of sin, uh, bring you out of darkness, uh, and now 
you to go do it. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, yes, you get your family together, brother. Grab your wife by the hand and grab your children. Uh, and let's get out here and do what's right for God. Uh, don't you let these drag queens uh, come in there and shake their butts in front of your kids. Get up off your couch and get out there to the school and rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Get out of there and go rebuke the devil. Don't you let the devil flaunt around your family. Don't you allow them to do that. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Uh, say yeah, somebody. Uh, and when you start rebuking the curse, uh, look at your neighbor, say rebuke the curse. Uh, say, say, say it again, say rebuke the curse. Uh, and when you rebuke the curse, the glory is coming. Uh, when you rebuke the curse, the favor is coming. Uh, when you rebuke the curse, the devil is going to get out of the way. Uh, the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. Uh, can I get an amen, somebody? Uh, I need some brothers and sisters that's ready to fight. Uh, I need folk that's ready to get out here uh, with the sword of God and fight. Uh, say yeah. Say yeah. It's time for God uh, to fight in the people. Say yeah. High five somebody. And say it's time to fight. It's time to fight. Don't you dare let the devil continue to do this. Don't let him continue to do this. We're going to get our jobs back. We're going to get our businesses back. We're going to get our churches back. And the time is now because the sound of the Spirit is moving in the trees. You're the trees. You're the trees. Jesus laid hands on the man and he says, I see men as trees walking. Then he says, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves and fruit will bring forth always. This, this time, this, this is it. We have a small gap to get in here and get it done. I need folk that's got the Holy Ghost, Holy, Holy Spirit, that's got faith in God to pick up your sword right now and let's go get it done. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know what? You think you're going to kick us out of politics, but we're going to get right on in here because the Lord told us to go get it. This is the moment to get it done. We're going to get out of here, everybody, but I feel a revival coming. I feel like preaching right now. I feel like having a Holy Ghost time. Grab your neighbor by the hand. 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 And say, neighbor, when I count to three, it's going to be a right now time to get out here and fight. The Holy Spirit is about to come upon you. He's going to give you power to cast out devils. Power to move in politics. Power to do what's right. Now rock that hand. Rock that hand. And say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm stirring up the gift right now. I'm stirring up the gift right now. I want you to get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is about to do this. America is about to be saved. Deliverance is coming our way. Power is coming our way. Joy is coming our way. Peace is coming our way. In the name of Jesus. Save your sons, save your daughters, save your teachers, and save your nation right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to release the power of God into your life. One, in the name of Jesus. Two, in the name of Jesus. Three, go, 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 go. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Come on, give God the praise. Come on. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Ah, yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Lift your hands and say yeah. Ah! 
Oh, yeah. Oh, glory. I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, glory. The power of the Holy Ghost is in this place. I want you, when I count to three, when I count to three, this is it. I'm going to be done. And then I want you to run down to the altar. We're going to get some power. But I want you to vote. I want you to get involved in politics because this is where God is directing us like the mulberry trees. We are about to cut the head of the snake off of this serpent. We are about to save America from these demons. And it's going to start with you and with me moving in the power of God. When I count to three, when I count, 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 count. When I count to three, when I count to three, I want you to move by faith. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. When I count to three, I feel like saving some babies in the womb. When I count to three, I feel like pulling some folks out of prison. When I count to three, I feel like bringing some folks out of alcoholism. When I count to three, I feel like bringing some folks out of homosexuality. When I count to three, I feel like bringing you out of poverty. When I count to three, I feel a house for somebody, a job for somebody else, healing for somebody else, and deliverance for somebody else, salvation for somebody else. God is about to move in this place in power. the glory. When I count the three, we just gonna jump to our feet and let the Holy Ghost move. Say yeah. Shackles are falling off. Demons are coming out. Yeah. 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 Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Out of your belly. Say yes. Say yes. My soul says 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 yes. My soul. My soul. My soul says yes. In my soul. Yes, in my soul. Yes, in my mind. Yes, in my home. Yes, in my car. Yes, on the job. Yes, every day, 24-7, I give God my yes. Say yeah. Ah, yeah. Glory. One, two, three. Give God some praise in here. Come on. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Everybody, everybody, I'm, we got to make this a revival. You've been telling God no. You've been saying no, Holy Spirit. No to Christ. No to God. No to righteousness. No to fighting. But God wants you to open your mouth. Just like you're at the altar with him. Just like you're about to get married. And say, yes, I will. Yes, I do. 
I want to fight for your kingdom. I want to fight for your glory. Say yeah. I want your kingdom to come. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Out of your soul. Say yeah. Out of your belly. Say yeah. Say yeah. Lift your hands, everybody, and say yes, Lord. 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 Tell him yes. 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 Are y'all ready? Fight for America. Fight for the kingdom of God. Fight for righteousness. Fight for light to come. Fight! A sound of war! A sound of war is rising. Woo! Fight, 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 fight. Come on. Hey, ministers. Just anoint everybody real quick with oil. Just touch everybody, and then we're gonna be out of here. But war is rising up in your spirit. And it's, and it's not your anger, it's not personal anger, it's not hate speech, it's the spirit of God. He's the one that's stirring up your heart, stirring up your spirit, that's activating you to get out there and do something that's right for the country. Do something that's right for the kingdom and vote against these demonic folk. Again, everybody just say yes, 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 yes. several, about 15 uh, kids that made a decision. Of course, if they're under, underage, they need to speak to their parents. But um, anyways, we're baptizing them now. If you have not, you have not made that decision. If you have not made that decision, this is a time for you to make that decision. The Bible says you must be born again of the washer and of the spirit, right? Praise the Lord. So when you're baptized in Jesus' name, hallelujah, uh, all your sins, God takes in, amen, and buries them. Let's rejoice. So if you're here, let, let one of the ushers, where are my ushers and greeters? I know they're all over the house, somewhere in space. Praise the Lord, everybody. She's decided to give her life to the Lord. She had an awesome time at camp. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost is moving. Let's extend our hands and let's pray right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray you have your hands upon Malia, God, as her, na her name now is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray, Lord, that you lead and guide her, Lord. Get her rooted in the doctrine, Lord, and have a love for you, God. I pray in Jesus' name. Malia Akawili, as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin.
God gave with us, hallelujah, he's decided to give his life to the Lord, had an awesome time at it, camp unstoppable, hallelujah, let's extend our hands, Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, as gave, gives you his life today, Father, Lord, we pray the blessings upon him, Lord, that you get him rooted and grounded in the faith of God, Lord, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord, that his heart grows with a love like never before, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray, gave Aka Willie, as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Jesus. We're ready for you right here, right now. The Bible says, unless a man is born again of the water and the spirit, he shall not inherit in the kingdom of heaven. Listen, this is the day of salvation. The Lord is knocking on your heart. These hours that we're living in are desperate times, but we know that God is still able. Is there somebody else? Come on. Can you raise your hand? Will that be you here? Will that you be you? Come on. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, how he's
leave anywhere. We have a we'll have our, our third session. I, I, I want to do two things. Uh, we have another candidate, praise the Lord, that wants to be baptized in Jesus. Her, amen. I, I found out her name is Zoe. Little Zoe. Don't leave, don't leave. I would like uh, Pastor Jerome and the other candidates to come. I want to pray only if you feel the liberty. Uh, would you come? Would you come? You know, he, I, I understand his point that we can't just pray and not do nothing. Come on, somebody. This church has waged war in the spirit since all this has begun. You know, the world and its systems are failing. Medical science is failing the world. Watch, 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 watch. And so what is the church to do? We have to have answers. We had a, a gentleman who had, you know, he, Brother Noah, just to give you a testimony about how when we were confronted with the whole COVID and people dying, this man had 2% chance to live, as you know. And his wife came, desperate, never heard, had heard of our church. And she came off, I mean, of course, the internet, she learned about us and God told her to go to Redeemer. Never met her before. We had a miracle service and she came and I said, what is your need? The line, you know, people were lined up to be prayed for. It was one of, the, one of those services that lasted like, you know, a long time. And she said, my, my husband is dying. He has 2% chance to live. 2%. 2%. And all the doctors and what have you were, you know, telling her just to, you know, he's done. And, and she kept being persistent. And I remember I prophesied to her, said, the Lord told me to tell you that you will not be a widow. You sometimes, it's, you know, when you prophesy, you declare something to someone you know, they'll say, well, Bishop knows all that. He knows my story. But when you don't know, God knows. And you know, when I walked away, the enemy, you know how the, the devil does, you know, he says, you know, sometimes you need to, he's telling me this, you, sometimes you need to close your mouth. I said, no, I'm going to open up wider. And, and I'm leading up to why we need to pray for these folks because, um, you know, I said, you know, so we, we prayed and we declared and, and she came back and she would text me and she'd text us and she says, I, 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 I took my rug and I just placed it beside my husband and I prayed and I believed God. She says, I would listen to the word that was being preached and I begin to declare. Inside. And she was, so she, two weeks ago, he came inside walking. Watch. He was a, 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 a supervisor, an engineer at uh, the Apollo, uh, at, at one of the, I think it was Apollo Verde nuclear power plant, and he had lost everything. And, um, it, you know, he couldn't find a job because they said, this is now after, I want to show you why we need people of faith, people who know how to stand. Come on, somebody. My point is this, that the world is failing humanity. But whose report shall we believe? We must believe in Jehovah Rapha. Listen, y'all, listen. I prophesied to them again. I said, the enemy has come in one way. You're depleted, but God is going to open seven doors. I declare this in your life, praise the Lord. I'll, I'll get, amen. I said, God opened seven doors in your life, revenues, areas. See, he comes in like a thief to kill, to steal, to destroy. But God will raise up a standard. Redeemer Apostolic Church, you have a mandate by God. We have had several, we have several and many people come in here who are representing, representing what have you. We're, we're not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what you should do. Amen. Is we need to continue to pray and believe God and support the message that we are world changers. The Bible says, listen to me, when, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. And the reason there's so much suppression, oppression, upon humanity today as, as a whole is because there are people who are unrighteous they don't know your god redeemer of a solid church so i consider a great honor honestly and i i, I got the pushback i got people came up to what do you do mixing all this stuff in church 
you haven't read your Bible. This, this church is for the violent. Come on, somebody. The kingdom, the kingdom of heaven suffer the violent. And the violent, come on, the violent, say, I am violent in the spirit. Take it by force. And we have, I want to pray for them. The Bible says, listen, y'all, unless the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. And I, I believe God, so I want to anoint you with oil. And, and, and I want to declare, you're going to extend your hands this way. Um, amen. We'll declare doors. Listen, I'm praying, I'm declaring. That the treasures of darkness be revealed. That be resources, support. Man shall give into your bosom. I will place it in their hearts. Place it like an ember. I will send my angel like I did to Peter. I will open doors that no man can shut. I, I, he will, the, the angel will take the gates of iron from the city uh, that hold it under bondage and hostility. Uh, when the doors, and now they are lifted, that means that Peter had access. I get, the Spirit of God gives you access by the power of God I push him forward in the name of Jesus Christ ah, and he continued I pray for my sister I don't know I've met her today but, but I pray that you too will also, that, that God will bless you and that God will enlarge your territory he will enlarge your feet he will enlarge you to a capacity but God says, put me first. I am not second. This nation has put me second and forgot about me. You must not forget. You must exalt the name of Jesus. Haresha, I am God. And I will make your way prosperous. Raise your hand. God said, the same way I gave you courage to jump out of planes and do things that an ordinary man would not do unless he go through strict training. I have given you courage like Gideon like a Joshua yes I will give you courage I will cause give you strength to stand but God said again I must be first I must be first I am there is one God one faith and one baptism uh, anything outside of that is idolatry I pray for blessings upon his life as well in the name of Jesus can we exalt in it if there is someone else, maybe you're not ready to be baptized, you don't understand, but today's a day where you're saying, God, I want to turn my life over to Jesus. Would you come up here? I just want to pray with you. Yes, that's right. It's, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please come. Stand right here. Can I minister? Sometimes... The enemy comes to lie to people and says, well, if you overcommit, it's too much. Almost like God is placing a burden on you. Well, that's not, that's not true. The church, is, the church is God's embassy here. Amen? Here on earth. There's someone else here. God is a, God, someone else. You, see, you know, you don't have a home church. You're in transition. God says, don't waste no time. I have brought you here for a reason. Can you raise your hands? Can you raise your hand? Humble yourself. Can you extend your hands? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you will bless him, that you will help him. Say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I give you my soul. I give you my spirit. I give you my mind. Fill my life with your presence. In Jesus' name, I give you praise. Give, give the Lord a round of applause, somebody. Look, there's still uh, these other children. Are, they, they're making, some of these kids are, go ahead, some of these kids. Amen, hallelujah. This is how good camp was, ladies and gentlemen. This is how 
important it is. Amen. They're giving their life to God. Hallelujah. Desiree is with us today. Let's pray for her and extend our hands. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As these children are partaking, Lord, in the plan of salvation, we pray, Lord, that your hand is upon them, Lord, as their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, that you root them and ground them in the faith, God. Lord, that their heart grows with the love and passion for you. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. There is a way to win you. As a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You midweek service every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We would love to see all of you here. Let's make it a priority. Also on Monday nights is prayer. Uh, something that God had put in our first lady's heart to continue with our Monday night prayers. Let's make it a, a, a habit to be in the house of the Lord. June uh, 14th through the 15th, I believe, is the VBS. July 13th through the 15th will be our VBS, Vacation Bible School. We need volunteers. We need people to come help set up. And we also want your kids to come. So please register. Take this time to do that. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Give them a high five or knuckle hobby. You want to greet them. God bless you. Go with God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.